1632, Galileo Galilei introduced the so-called principle of relativity and he used an example of a ship traveling at a constant speed on a calm sea without rocking and he said that any observer below the deck would not be able to say whether the ship was moving or stationary. In other words, you would not be able to conduct any experiment that would distinguish a motion. As an experiment, I always imagine this box, which can give you a result in a form of ordered sequence of letters like AB. If you put such a box in a frame that is moving with a constant velocity, the result is gonna be always the same. At least experiments using mechanics only, since at that time not much more was known. Then people started to discover electric and magnetic fields, and everything culminated with this gentleman whose name is James Clark Maxwell, who introduced these four differential equations. And from now on, things become complicated. And it is not because how scary these equations look like, it is because how they were derived. Maxwell didn't use any frame of reference when he derived his equations. There are field equations they hold for any stationary observer. This means that if you measured a certain value of electric and magnetic field, then you can use Maxwell's equations to determine the evolution of these fields. It depends only on the values of the field you initially measure, but the problem happens when you want to use these measurements for a moving observer. Then you get the wrong predictions because the moving observer has to measure these fields for himself and then he can make predictions. So the moving observer can't use your measured values and predict anything about these fields and that's really weird. If you try to calculate the force acting on a moving charge in an electromagnetic field, you would get the equation which is called the Lorentz force. You can immediately spot a problem with this equation though, and it is the fact that the force depends on the velocity of the charged particle. But the velocity is a relative quantity, so how can a force be a relative quantity as well? What is the reference frame we should measure this speed relative to? A good example of this is this experiment. Imagine an infinite wire with a non-zero current. This current is represented by a moving charges inside the wire, in particular electrons moving to the right. This means that the direction of the current is to the left, and according to this particular Maxwell's equation, current creates a magnetic field around the wire. We can make an assumption that the density of the electrons inside the wire is the same as the protons and therefore the total electric charge of the wire is zero. Imagine we have a positively charged particle moving to the right with the same velocity as the velocity of the electrons inside the wire. According to the Lorentz force equation, there should be a force acting on the particle in a perpendicular direction to the magnetic field and its velocity, which means the particle should be repelled from the wire. Since we assume the wire is neutral, the contribution to the force from the electric part is zero. So the result of such experiment is a particle that is slowly drifting away from the conductor. But now, let's take a look at this problem from the reference frame of the particle. In a frame of particle, the electrons are stationary and the protons are moving to the left, which means the current is still flowing to the left, creating the same magnetic field, but now the velocity of the particle is zero. And if we take a look at the Lorentz force, then not just the electric part is zero, but also the magnetic part. Therefore, there should be no force whatsoever. This is certainly a problem because the result of an experiment should not depend on the reference frame we choose. And therefore there are only two possible resolutions of this problem. There is either a global frame of reference we should measure the velocities relative to, 
which basically breaks the Galilean relativity, but all observers would put the same velocity inside the Lorentz force equation, and therefore the force would be still the same. And the second possible resolution is that the charge of the wire depends on the reference frame of the observer. This would mean that the electric part of the Lorentz force would not be zero and produce a force on the particle. Okay, there is maybe a third option and it's that Maxwell's equations are simply wrong. But this gentleman did a series of experiments throughout his life and all were in accord with Maxwell's equations. So this option seems kind of unlikely. Then there were these two gentlemen, Michelson and Morley, who tried to find the global inertial frame of reference for electromagnetism, but failed. It is the famous Michelson-Morley experiment, which measures the speed of light in two different directions by measuring the interference pattern on the detector, and they found out that the speed of light is the same in all directions. Since the Maxwell's equations had problem with Galilean transformations, this gentleman, whose name is Henry Lorentz, calculated how the proper transformation rules should look like for Maxwell's equations and came up with this set of transformations called Lorentz transformations. If you apply these transformations on the electric and magnetic field, you would find that they mix, which suggests that the second resolution is correct and the electric charge density depends on the frame of reference. But why? Why should a charge density depend on the observer? Hendrik Lorentz didn't give any physical explanation for these transformation rules. He thought of them as being just pure mathematical construct. The final resolution came with this young gentleman with his special relativity. According to special relativity, the distance interval between two points in space depend on the relative velocity of the observer. So, if there are two points in space that are stationary relative to us, and we measure the distance L, then if we start moving relative to these two points, the distance between them becomes shorter. And this is the resolution why charge density depends on the observer. Because if you look at the wire again, from a stationary frame point of view, it is the magnetic field acting on the particle, but if we jump into a frame of the particle, the distance interval between protons shrinks as they start moving relative to us. And moreover, the electrons that were moving relative to us are now stationary which causes their stretch. Now, we can clearly see that there is a positive charge density of the wire. This is kind of eye-opening to me because the discovery of the magnetic field around the wire happened long time ago. And for all this time, magnetic field was here as a hint for length contraction. And it took almost 100 years to actually discover it. So, there is in fact just one force, which is electromagnetic force. But this name doesn't work quite well for me because it still kind of implies that there are actually two, electric and magnetic force. But those are just two manifestations of just one force. The reason why we perceive them as being two different forces is because we are not used to think of time as being another dimension. And here we are trying to describe a four-dimensional quantity in terms of two three-dimensional vectors in space. But having two three-dimensional vectors in space is kind of redundant, as there is overall six quantities in total. But electric and magnetic fields are coupled together via Maxwell's equations. And by a proper definition of these fields, we get just four independent quantities, which is what we want in four-dimensional space-time. Electromagnetism, however, is not the only thing that needs to be rewritten in terms of four-dimensional quantities. 
position, velocity, and momentum all have their four-dimensional representation in special relativity. Since the velocities we are dealing with on Earth are very small, it is really difficult to notice any relativistic effect. But there are so many electrons inside a wire that even small velocities of a charged particle can have a big effect. And that is why magnetic field around the wire was discovered much more early. Einstein in his paper discovered the same transformation rules as Lorentz, but he didn't even know about his existence at that time. Those transformation rules just tell you that when you see a charge that is stationary relative to you, then if you start moving, then the magnetic field appears. Similarly, if you see a magnetic field, when you start moving, the electric field appears. And all these because we have two three-dimensional representations of a four-dimensional quantity. When I first learned about the connection between electricity and magnetism, it just blew my mind. And I hope that similar thing happened to you as well. If it did, please give this video a like since it really motivates me to create more and I see you in the next video.